uh, representing the uh, Congresswoman is her very, very distinguished Chief of Staff of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Elam Hoblat. And we're delighted, Elam, that you are here to represent the Congresswoman. As someone who served in the Congress, I fully understand the importance of key staff members. They can either make you or break you. And uh, obviously, Elam has done a wonderful job. Eliana ross Lettinen is the chair, the chairperson of the committee, and she has never lost an election. Let's <laughs> yeah. proceed. And, and the chairman reminds me, we will be presenting the award later on uh, to the congresswoman in the uh, offices of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and along with the ambassador. So that, that will happen. Because I knew that I could never do justice to the remarks that the Congresswoman had prepared uh, before President Obama scheduled his joint address to Congress, what we have done is we do have copies of her prepared remarks and uh, we will be distributing them to you so that you can see from her own words how she felt about receiving this honor. She did want me to relay a couple of things. Uh, one that uh, she felt extremely appreciative that she would even be considered for an award that's named for two legendary defenders of freedom, two individuals who believed in the power of the human spirit in overcoming seemingly insurmountable challenges. Uh, she would have loved to have been here. She has had the pleasure of uh, discussing a number of issues, particularly the defense of human rights and democracy with our distinguished president uh, and fellow recipient. Uh, and those past recipients that Congressman Ritter mentioned as uh, he was introducing the Congresswoman are certainly role models that the Congresswoman has had throughout her career in uh, public service. But you can read her remarks, you can uh, hear the statements by Congressman Ritter, Dr. Edwards, Carl, uh, Ed Fulner, who's known the Congresswoman, the fellow ambassadors, uh, ambassador of Lithuania, who know her well, but as someone who's had the honor of knowing the Congresswoman virtually my entire life, uh, and having had the opportunity to be a witness to her efforts, I feel that it might be appropriate to share just a few anecdotes that illustrate who Ileana ross Leighton is beyond the public persona, beyond the resolutions or the hearings or the public statements that she makes. Uh, and I feel that since we had the ambassador speak about his former boss, Madam President, and Congressman Ritter referred to his boss, uh, and we've had other make references to their bosses. I feel it's only appropriate for me to just make a few comments about my current boss. Uh, and in so doing, I do want to say that not just because she's my boss, but uh, as the daughter and granddaughter of victims of Cuba's communist regime, I am doubly honored to be here today representing the Congresswoman because she is not just a political figure or a public figure, she really is a personal defender of everything that my family holds dear, not just, pardon me, the totality of all of us today. We were doing so 
so well. But a uh, couple of things that came to mind as I was just trying to share the personal side of her. Uh, I recall, and since we were discussing the uh, current Human Rights Council and its predecessor entity, the UN Human Rights Commission, I recall a few years ago when the Congresswoman was leading a delegation to Geneva, and at the time, she can you all hear me? Oh, there you go, it works. <laughs> she was leading a delegation uh, to lobby on behalf of a number of resolutions. There were resolutions that we were trying to convince fellow members of the commission condemning the genocide in Darfur. We were leading efforts to condemn the human rights atrocities in Iran. And uh, of course, well, as my husband can attest who is here, I, I tend to project sometimes <laughs> to his chagrin. Uh, so I'll try and project as much as possible. No, you got that. There we go. And of course, one of the uh, other resolutions that she was particularly interested in uh, was a resolution condemning the gross human rights abuses by the Cuban regime. So on maybe the second day of her visit to, to as many of you may know, what's called the Palais in uh, Geneva where the commission met, she is coming out of a van, only to be cornered, almost accosted, I would say, by TV Rebelde and Radio Rebelde, which are the official TV and radio outlet of Cuba's communist regime. And I recall the reporter, so-called reporter, saying, Congresswoman, this is a regime who refers to the Congresswoman as the ferocious she-wolf, Congresswoman, do you have a few words to say to the Cuban people? And without missing a beat, Congresswoman Ross Leighton turns around and says, it would be my pleasure, but on one condition. You will not censor, you will not cut my statement, and you will allow my comments about freedom, democracy, and human rights for the people of Cuba to be aired in its entirety. Caught by that, they had years later, the cameraman found her in a little cafe area just outside the meeting room where the plenary session was taking place, and he approaches her in a whisper and says, Congresswoman, could you please tell me what the process is to seek political asylum in the United States, <laughs> and can you help me? <laughs> so just that very moment, uh, as he witnessed her interaction with the representatives of his oppressor, he immediately realized, this is where I want to be and this is who I want to go to. Uh, but there's been many other instances, for example, at one ministerial meeting of the uh, Community of Democracies, uh, something that I know is very dear and true to uh, our ambassadors here. I was uh, representing her on a staff level delegation. And I was introduced to pro-democracy advocates and human rights dissidents from the Central Asian country. When I was introduced as working for Ileana Ross Leighton, I suddenly was in a group hug, <laughs> kissed and hugged by these uh, pro-democracy advocates who knew about resolutions and hearings <laughs> that the Congresswoman had held to put pressure on their governments and in support of the pro-democracy efforts that they were engaged in to build civil society. Uh, so just two more anecdotes that I think give you a more in-depth or maybe greater insight into the type of person that she is. Uh, when she chaired the Middle East and Central Asia subcommittee, she always said when she met with civil society leaders, I am the message that the United States government is trying to relay to you and your people. And that is, I am a woman, I am an ethnic minority, I'm a refugee of a repressive regime, but here in this country of freedom and opportunity, 
I was able to become the chairman of this Middle East and Central Asia subcommittee. And one meeting in particular with the Emir of Qatar uh, at the time, who is a very tall man, um, and some other fellow leaders of the Gulf countries that are not known for their human rights record, their stellar human rights record, uh, and certainly have a bit of a disdain for certain uh, genders and uh, minorities. But uh, as she is talking to them, I see them almost cowering. And the juxtaposition of a five foot two, extremely petite Ileana Ross Leighton with these very tall, uh, certainly imposing leaders from the Gulf countries, and then to see them immediately try and figure out ways to please her and demonstrate to her that they really are committed to making reforms and to integrating women and marginalized sectors of their society into their political process and into their governments was certainly extremely rewarding for me, not just as her staffer, but uh, again, as someone whose family did experience uh, oppression on such a large scale. And then just one last example that, again, gives you the idea, a sense of how she is and that she doesn't mince words. I think the ambassador said it best uh, when describing Madam President. It's, uh, she is similar to the Iron Lady. She says what she means, she means what she says, but she says it in such a way that it charms even the greatest of adversaries. And that was at uh, two leadership meetings uh, that were hosted. One with the uh, Russian president, as he is called, Medvedev, and one with the Chinese leader. With the Russian leader, she immediately proceeds to corner him and starts just pounding him on the murder of independent journalists, on the increasingly deteriorating situation in Russia, and proceeds to hand him a five-page letter that she had sent to President Obama detailing every case of every murder and every persecution that she had available to her and that had taken place in Russia. Again, the reaction was certainly memorable for me to see this man, but it was topped off by the Chinese leader who was attempting to run away from her, literally run away from her as she pressed them on everything from forced abortion to the crackdown on religious leaders to the targeting of the Falun Gong, and just the range of gross violations committed by the Chinese regime. So I can go on forever. Obviously, I am a huge fan, uh, but I can only relay that as a witness to her efforts and uh, standing by her side for the last 16 plus years as a staff member, on the Foreign Affairs Committee, I can only say that her commitment is unwavering. And she is touched by the trust and confidence that you have placed in her by giving her this award and trusting her to carry on the legacy of Presidents Truman and Reagan and all the past recipients of uh, the Truman Reagan Medal of Freedom. So with that, I won't bore you anymore again. Please do uh, read her own remarks because it's her words that uh, most clearly depict uh, her views about the ongoing struggle against communism and all other evil ideologies. So thank you very much.